Hello and welcome to our weekly Kickstarter Spotlight, where we look at what's hot and what's not on Kickstarter. This week we've got me, Keith, presenting Nexus 2 The Gods Awaken. And I'm Charlie, and today I'll be presenting a game, Timber and Stone. And me, Alex, talking about war heroes. Firstly, Nexus 2 The Gods Awaken. Basically, if anyone's played Nexus, which is a 2005 game, uh, space real-time strategy game, I haven't, which is bizarre because it looks like it looks like one of the games I really should have played. I mean, it's a space and it's a real-time strategy. I love both of those genres. Why? Why have I missed this? It's like someone missing a Firefly, which I found out one of my friends had earlier today. I was horrified. Educate them. Well, they started watching it, so I was like, what? Only now? Good. But uh, yeah, it, basically it's a sequel to Nexus from... 2005 Nexus Jupiter Incident, which is a Metacritic score of 77, average critic score of 90%, average user score. GameSpot gave it 83, PC gave it 84, PC Game gave it 83. So basically, the original game was universally well liked. Yay, more arbitrary numbers. Yeah, so high arbitrary numbers, but they're high. Arbitrary, but high. Basically, the second game is by a lot of the same guys, and they want to basically make a sequel. Pretty much bang on, there isn't anything new here. It's just a sequel. It's going to be a lot of updating of the original graphics and stuff. It's the same guy, so they've got a lot of the same concept art, and they said they can use some of the original art as well, because it was well done, and it hasn't really dated. Whereas they can use a lot of the old models and stuff to use as guides and sort of pre-production stuff to be able to improve on them, which uh, is why they're only asking for $650,000, which sounds like a lot, but for the production of a video game from concept art stage, I think it's a fair, fair bet what you really want currently they've got 23 days to go and they've got about 12 percent of that so they've got 83,000. not bad no so it's it's on track to maybe make it and considering you normally get a lull and a push at the end it might make it at the moment uh basically it's 20 dollars to pledge and get uh, a digital download copy but that's for only the first 2,000 subscribers they're currently on one and a half thousand so there's only 500 left so if anyone wants to get in there get in there now otherwise it's 25 dollars to get a digital download copy Going up, you've got artwork and digital soundtrack at 35. Going up, you get a box copy at 55. 100 special edition with a t-shirt. All that standard good stuff then. Map. Yeah, basically the stuff you can imagine. Um, what exactly differentiates this game from other strategies? Like, is it a 4X? I see it has like customization and ship creation and stuff. But Well... It's not exactly a 4X. Basically, you've got set missions and you do these missions as far as I understand it, um, which means it's instead of going for that 4X strategy gap, which we've had several games of recently and they've been good, not so good and broken on release, but expecting to get better. <laughs> but yeah, basically, you'll have maybe 10 ships maximum, or at least that's how the original game was. And then you'll have a load of fighters and bombers below that. And you'll be able to sort of have your equipment and you'll go out and you'll try and kill the enemy in your missions and you'll have maybe 20 missions or so for the game um but what really sets me off is the fact that they've got a tech demo that they did six years ago when they were pitching the idea of a sequel and this tech demo they show in their kickstarter video and it looks pretty amazing i mean let's have a quick look at this now yeah those visuals are pretty amazing for six years ago and they're pretty good for now, I'd be honest. But uh, Oh yeah, that looks better than quite a few things I've been playing this year. Well, I'll, I'll, the only criticism I could really draw of this is the particle effects maybe look a slightly dated. But I love this shield effect. Yeah, it reminds me... Actually, it reminds me of StarCraft. One of the uh, Psy abilities the Protoss have. But I've never played StarCraft, but uh, no, it, it looks pretty damn, pretty damn sweet. Yeah, it's a nice looking game. And that's just a tech demo from six years ago, yeah. And you can imagine that, yeah, yeah they'll definitely improve on that. That's actually, um, that's actually something the original was praised for as well, being fairly pretty for its day. So they're, they're only asking sort of, uh, I'd say it's a reasonable amount for a big budget game, 650. I've just, been, uh, I've just been reading up on it now. Apparently the original had quite a slow pace, but very deep strategic decisions to make so it's good yeah. if you like a slow burner i don't know if that's going to carry over into the sequel but there's a good chance it will inherit most I, of that i think the general theme yeah. will carry through and uh yeah it's definitely a game where you sort of have maybe slightly longer missions instead of crazy fast-paced combat which i don't think space games are that suited for 
unless you maybe like a fighter or something as a, as a commander you want to be able to overlook the battle and you want to see the ships lumbering into position and then crazy battles going on with beams I don't know I shit. always uh, Empire at War the Star Wars RTS had some really good space combat I felt that was pretty fast paced mm. but yeah yeah it's a different kind of game yeah so I'm I'm hoping this will make it it's definitely something worth funding in my opinion if that's the sort of stuff you like that's uh, Nexus 2 looks great same crew, looking for a reason why money. Yeah, so I can't see a reason not to back these guys. Today I'm looking at Timber and Stone. This is, we think, a PC game. It's not actually stated on the Kickstarter page. They're the only references we can find are to PCs. Don't know about you Mac users out there. Um, I, I suppose we'll have to wait for further news on that. Uh, it looks it looks like a, a voxel game, you know, similar to some modern ones. Yeah, I'm looking at, at this in the browser. It looks a lot like Minecraft, but is it more of like a voxel-based RTS? There are certainly some similarities to Minecraft, definitely in looks. The voxel style is very attributed to that these days. Um, people who are aware of Minecraft, and let's face it, who isn't these days, are going to see a lot of similarities just, just from the looks of it. Fences, uh, chickens... Wheat fields, uh, the stone textures, uh, sand, grass, everything does look quite similar. And your RTS point as well, yeah, it's definitely designed as an RTS feature. The, uh, the inspiration of it, certainly to me, screams of something that the creator isn't mentioning in his list of inspirations, which is an old game called Stronghold, where you built your own castle uh, had to manage the resources and the defences of it all while being attacked and trying to take out an enemy force at the same time. Oh, okay, cool. So, what is it as an overall gist? You're starting out in a randomly generated terrain uh, with a group of villagers, farmers, whatever you want to call them, of different professions. You choose to build a settlement by mining stone, harvesting wood, keeping food in, in stock as well. Everything you build has to be generated and created from the terrain, and then you build defences to protect yourself against evil minions. Uh, also, if you disrespect Mother Earth and forge too deep, uh, mine too deeply and too greedily, you might unearth awful monsters such as spiders and plagues of worms that come and attack your folk, and they can wreak havoc on your settlement. The game seems well designed to the point it is. It's currently in alpha stage. Uh, the guy's hoping to release beta within one month and uh, release it fully by the end of the year, hopefully with this Kickstarter going through. Currently, there's uh, only a few placeholder items in there, like the GUI. That's something that he's looking to develop, as well as ironing out bugs and polishing out things, particularly the sound with the hopeful successful funding of this. So get a copy of it. You're looking at at least $15. That'll give you the full game once it's released. Uh, so that equates to 11.5 euros or just over £9 British, which is quite reasonable for the game it's hoping to be. In total, the, the guy's looking for $50,000 as his full budget, of which just under five grand has already been pledged. So he's got 21 days left to find the other forty-five grand. Um I think this one could go through. It looks it looks quite well designed. It's certainly something that uh, will appeal to people of the moment. Uh, I, th I think it caters well enough for people who who are young enough only to really have been involved in things like Minecraft and the older generations that certainly enjoyed things like the original Age of Empires and the like. And that's it. That's Timber and Stone. Do check it out. It'll be in the description at the bottom. Check the link. And I'll pass you on to Alex. Yeah, I'm looking at a game called War Heroes for iOS. There are two things I want to talk about first about this game. First of all, War Heroes isn't a particularly inspiring name. It sounds pretty dull, but the game itself does look interesting. Second thing, this game is looking for quite a low amount of money. $6,000 is the goal. Um, it's got 31 days to go. And in that time, it's only had three backers. So... I would like to see this get more support. Some of that, those backers have actually been, well, one of them has given $150. So 
currently that we're sitting on 185 of the 6,000 goal. So you watching this video, if you get convinced by Alex's pitch here, you could raise <laughs> the amount of backers by a whole 25, oh, 33%. Massive yeah. improvement. Now, this game, it's sort of been inspired by um, a little bit by XCOM, that sort of squad development strategy, as well as the Kairosoft line. If you play iOS games, which I play quite a lot, long commutes and all that, uh, Kairosoft makes sim games like uh, Game Dev Story, uh, Pocket League. These are all like really awesome little sim games with nice pixel art graphics. This guy's not related to this, but you know he's basing his idea on a similar concept, but based on World War II. Except this is a World War II where mechs are in use, and you know you've got some fairly high tech stuff going on to sort of flesh out, give more options to the player. The way the game's going to be played is you have various missions you can complete to win the war. You construct your squad, give them the gear you want, set their formation. But once you set them off into combat, you have no control. So it's a little bit like um, gratuitous space battles, but a ground war. Okay. At the moment, the game is fairly basic. To get on board with this and get a copy of the game, you're looking at $5, about £3, or about €4, Euros, just under €4. Euros. That's not a bad price, even though this is something that I'm still slightly uncertain whether it will succeed or not. It's a good price because, you know, you're not losing that much. Five bucks. It's a pint. Even if he... Yeah, exactly. And that's worth a game that, you know, even if you only play it for a couple hours, that's still a couple hours entertainment for the price of a beer. What more do you want? Yeah, 20 minutes, 20 minutes uh, of a beer or two hours of entertainment. If it's two hours of reasonably fun entertainment, I'd say it's probably worth it. But yeah, it, you know, five dollars for some. It, it's a fairly light strategy game. But saying that these soldiers have a lot of stats at work. You've got training, combat skill, but you've also got psychological effects like morale and things, so they can retreat from the battlefield okay. if it all gets too much for them. I think it, it's something that would entertain me on a bus ride. You know, it's the kind of thing. This is what Kickstarter's for. I picked it because he's not asking for a lot. And he's a very small project. And we've looked at, so far, we've looked at fairly big projects or things that have already got quite a lot of funding. This guy's sitting on about $200. You know, maybe throw him a bone, help him along if you like the idea. I mean, it's only the price of a pint and... Yeah, it's cheaper than any other Kickstarter you're going to find. And if, the, if it piques your interest, you might as well throw it. Yeah, just throw your money in, see what happens. He's got some decent rewards going on, little things. The most you can pledge is $1,500, which will... Let me have a look. He gives you a pick of any previous reward tier. In addition, you'll stay in close contact with him, <laughs> so you can, you can bounce ideas off you during production. So you basically, you basically become assistant game designer in the credits. <laughs> so, you know, maybe that step up into the industry for anyone that's interested. Well, there was one game which was saying if you, uh, if you paid them, what, like a thousand dollar tier that they'll name you as a producer in the game credits <laughs> yeah that's a good good on your cv which means you can then just go to like a load of game companies or whatever and go ah i was a producer on this well selling game on kickstarter and they actually believe you <laughs> <laughs> see how long it takes them to realize you know fuck all there you go guys a few interesting titles to look at if you like the stuff we've been doing throw us a sub and like the video let us know what you think in the comments you know if you've got something you want us to take a look at or you just want to give some feedback on these uh, these projects. Otherwise, we will uh, we'll see you next time. Yep, and definitely go have a look at these projects if they pique your interest. If you've got another idea for maybe our Challenge Accepted series, since we're just about coming to the end of our FTL run of free episodes, then uh, yeah, send us a message, send us a comment, and we'll have a look. Please don't make me play DEFCON against Keith. Come up with a different <laughs> game. <laughs>